What's up my fasters? It is Fasting Thursday and in this video we are going to talk about how fasting benefits hormones. It's a presentation I just did recently. So if this is your first time on our channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other fasting videos that we talk about here on this channel and other healthy tips. So I am Dr. Grant if this is your first time here and let's get right into the video. Fasting. Now why fasting is very good for the hormones specifically actually human growth hormones as well as insulin. So you might think as growth hormones, you probably think of um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, not actually Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, Sylvester Stallone, there we go. <laughs> uh, thinking of you know injecting yourself to get really ripped. However, human growth hormones, we can produce it naturally and it's very good and vital for our bones, our muscles, as well as for weight management along with insulin and fasting has shown so our insulin is produced from our pancreas our pancreas sits right below the stomach and we have what we call is beta and alpha cells so beta cells in the pancreas is what produces the insulin alpha cells is what produces what we call glucagon another hormone and they're both opposites so insulin will store sugar for fat, whereas glucagon will break down our fat for energy. So those are the two opposites. But what happens in the society, we live now in the society where food is everywhere. You go back way back in history, it was always feeding and, you know, famine and feasting, famine and feasting, periods. Our body has always been adapted to that. You go back to, you know, hunters and gatherers, same thing. They would go three days without eating because they were hunting. So our body is really adapted that we're, you know, feasting and famine periods going back and forth. Now, what happens when we have food excess to us consistently on a regular basis, our insulin levels will go up and eventually we'll get to a point where we cause insulin resistance. This is where I kind of get to the concern of why there's such a rise in obesity and also diabetes because of the food accessibility. Because what happens if you think about food and why the calorie restriction and the move more types of diets don't work. I mean, you think about Weight Watchers, you wonder why they don't have a reunion. <laughs> have you ever wondered about that? I mean, all the other big TV shows do because they've all, most of them have all gained it back. Why that is because the reason why low calorie restriction diets and move more concept is because when you're doing calorie restriction diet, your metabolism depletes. So when you refeed, when you're refeeding back, you gain that weight back and even more so. So it's more difficult to get back in the regimen because then that means you have to live a lifestyle like that the rest of your life, but it's so hard to keep that. Whereas fasting on the other hand, they found in research is it, if I go to the next slide, it will increase uh, growth hormones, as well as decrease insulin levels, as well as increase our metabolism. And why this is so effective, and you probably even hurt yourself, a lot, maybe even have family and friends that are doing intermittent fasting or fasting, or people who do the keto diet. Why this is, because if you think about food as like a fridge and a freezer concept. So when we are, when we eat food, when we're consuming it, we break it down, such as like carbs, and then we store it for later. We put it in our, in our liver, our muscle tissue for storage for later. That's like the fridge. Before we can move on to the freezer, so if we get too much, eventually what happens when your fr fridge gets too full? It will goes, well, if you don't want it to go bad, if you don't want it to go bad, what do you do with it? Throw in the freezer, right? So you throw in the freezer to store it for later, right? That's what our body does. It will store, when we have too much, it will store into fat, eventually store into fat. And so, but what happens is why fasting is so effective is because it really depletes our glycogen storage. So once the fridge is almost out, then we want to go to the fridge, I mean the freezer, and start decreasing uh, the freezer, but it takes a little bit more effort. We first got to deplete the glycogen storage before we move to our fat cells. That makes sense. So that's why doing the fasting and people who do the keto diet because it puts them in a ketosis state, which is breaking down your fat cells. That's what ketosis or ketogenic state is. It's breaking down your fat cells because your brain, it switches from burning off sugar 
to fat. So it switches to now reducing the fat versus the sugar because there's not much car uh, glycogen left. There's not much glucose left for the, the brain to even use. So it moves to using fat as fuel versus sugar as fuel. And this is why using a lifestyle change of doing it in fasting and fasting can be so more beneficial for people maintaining weight and losing weight for the rest of their life by implementing it. Because you think about it, with fasting, you don't have to specifically add anything or have a special diet, anything like that. As long as you start implementing intermittent fasting and fasting and just plan it according, it isn't that you need to try to fit fasting into your life, you fit it into your schedule that you already have. So for example, if you know you're gonna have a big feast on the weekend, like Thanksgiving's coming up, right? And you could plan accordingly doing your fast before and after, right? Because that is a feasting time, and then you have your fasting time. You can keep on implementing and still eat the foods that you want, but of course, implementing wholesome foods as much as possible, but not killing yourself about it and shaming yourself because, oh, I went to a wedding and I decided to have cake or I decided to have wine and I decided to have all these things that I shouldn't have. But if you get this in your lifestyle of intermittent fasting, fasting and feasting periods, you'll find that really that will really benefit as far as the, with the weight, but also even hormones. So not only does it help with increased uh, growth hormones and decreased insulin, but fasting has shown, like I mentioned before, increased autophagy. So for people who are dealing with muscle pain or joint pain, or even people who are dealing with internal scar issues, or even dealing with polycystic ovarian cysts, that benefits also from fasting because eventually your body starts getting rid of old cells that are not necessary when you're using fasting. So why I use this a lot through uh, my clinic of helping my patients. Of course, I like to meet my patients where they're at, but trying to, I would say fasting is one of the most powerful therapies and the most ancient therapies that are out there because there's so many benefits from it. They've even shown and proven it is one of the most effective ways of getting rid of diabetes, obesity, as well as help with Alzheimer's because it also helps with increased synapses in the brain as well as connections and I mean, I can go on forever about it. I have a whole designated YouTube channel just on talking about fasting stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, go ahead and give us a big thumbs up, share with your family and friends. And then of course, leave all those comments in the comment section below. And I love to answer any of your guys' questions. I try to answer all your guys' questions. And then again, if this is your first time on our channel, you don't wanna miss any great other videos on fasting and other health tip videos, hit this button right over here and make sure to hit the subscribe bell as well as hit any of these other links of these videos that I will share if you have not watched them before. So until next time, love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.